And I just, I can't tell you what it means to me to have taken, for you to have taken the time to be here. So I want to ask you to give yourselves a hand. thank Donna Hastings and the President Wayne for the invitation and the opportunity to be with you. For me, it is absolutely incredible that I get to stand before you here today. And so let's give it up for Donna Hastings and your President Wayne. Great. I was so excited I could not even sleep. And when I say that to you, I say that to you without the shadow of a doubt. It, it's true. I, I care so much and I'm so um, excited and, and so wanting to share what's on my heart today that I couldn't sleep. And the other thing about it is that I'm really, I'm not an early bird, right? So I'm not a morning person. True story, I, I was speaking to my mentor uh, a couple of weeks ago and I said, I've been invited to speak at the Kiwanis Club. And he said, well, what time is it? I said, it's 7.15 in the morning. I said, And I said, I'm not an early bird. Well, he said, you're going to be. <laughs> and so I, I agreed with him. Yes, I'm going to be. But I thought to myself, what's the best way to do it? So I started last week trying to set my alarm for an earlier time to get up and to, uh, to be fully present. Some days it worked, other days it failed. <laughs> but here I am and... What I can tell you is that I'm fully present in the body. I'm not too sure where my brain is at today. <laughs> I've got a brain that tends to go really, really fast. You know how you have children sometimes who are very high energy? I've got a brain that's kind of like that. How many of you have children? Maybe adult children. Good. How many of you remember being children? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so I, I want to let you know that I have two, two boys, and my firstborn one is very high energy. So he is one of these kids, he's now 24, but when he was little, he was just constantly going, he was constantly mm -hmm. racing, and so I had to have support. I couldn't keep up. My energy wasn't enough for him. Do you know there's an African proverb that says it takes a village mm -hmm. to raise children? Well, that boy needed a village, <laughs> and I was very fortunate that I had my mother and my stepfather and my brother and sister, who were part of my extended family, living with me at the time, so that they were able to support me with him. So coming back to my brain, my brain kind of works like that. It's constantly going. So if you see me kind of looking off into the distance or my mouth is pausing, it means that my mouth is trying to keep up. My brain has gone ahead and my mouth is just barely trying to keep up, all right? So bear with me while I try to keep up. All right. Now today we're talking about the art of fear-free living. And I want to acknowledge that I am no guru on the art of fear-free living. So the topic that is up for grabs here today is The Art of Fear-Free Living, and it's from a book that I happen to be co-author of, and so I just want to take it out and share it with you. Um, and as I said, I am not, I am not a guru on The Art of Fear-Free Living, but what it is is that I've come through some life experiences that allow me to live more fully and to live more freely. And do you know that there is a quote that says, on the other side of fear, there's freedom? Anybody ever heard that one? On the other side of fear is freedom. And so for me, I want to share with you that having come through a lot of fear, I'm experiencing greater freedom in my life. And so that's what allows me to be able to stand before you today to share this message. I also want to acknowledge that not everything is for everybody, but I know that if you made it here today, there's something here for you. And so I'm going to invite you to take what works for you and leave the rest. How is that? Yeah? Good. So the art of fear-free living. I, um, I'm a child of two teenage parents. Uh, I was born in rural Jamaica. Had to overcome poverty. Um, came face to face with gun violence in Kingston, Jamaica, which is the capital. And in the process, I 
made the decision with the help of my mom that I was going to leave Kingston, Jamaica and travel to Canada. I left, Can left Kingston and with no guarantee of a visa in Canada, I actually left alone, all by myself. I was 19 years old. It was very challenging and very difficult, but I'm thankful that I made it. I got to Canada and s some of the struggles that I faced were that I didn't have family. I faced, I came close to being homeless twice, not once, but twice. Um, and as far as working, I struggled to find work because <coughs> what kind of work would there be for me in Canada? So I resorted to being a babysitter and a telemarketer for several years. It took a very long time. Now, I'm not uh, knocking either, you know, <coughs> babysitting or telemarketing. <coughs> but it wasn't what I was looking for in my life, right? I wanted something more. Can you relate to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was just barely getting by. And so I just kept praying, is there, is, I know that, I noticed that you prayed today and I'm a woman of faith and I kept saying, is there ever going to be a break for me here? Can you relate to that where times you just feel like there's no break? And so I asked for that and you know, I got a lucky break. I got a good job in an insurance company with good benefits, good pay, and I started to do well. And so I was very grateful for that. I was there for three years. I had, by that time, I had acquired a nice apartment for myself. I had even gone on to travel with some friends. I had been doing some really good things. I had a new baby. And I, when I took stock of my life, though, I realized that I didn't, know that I wanted to continue working in this area and I'll tell you why. I enjoyed working with numbers. I was working in the accounting area as an accounting clerk. So I enjoyed working with numbers but I recognized that my job, my role on the planet, my mission here was to support people in solving problems. I believe that you all are difference makers and change agents here. Am I right? Yeah. Can you put your hand up if you recognize yourself as a difference maker and a change agent on the planet? Absolutely. And so there are times when you recognize that your mission and your purpose is so much bigger than whatever it is that you're doing. And I know that you all are very, very powerfully inspired to do good work on the planet. So I recognize that I was here to help people solve their problems. And I made the decision in that moment as I checked in with my values, what are the values that I hold, I thought I'm going to move forward and I'm going to go to university. And as I thought about it, I shared with some colleagues, the woman who actually mentored me. And when I shared with her, she said to me, that's a bad idea. It's not a good idea. It's actually crazy that you would think that you just had a baby you have a good secure job and you're going to leave your job to go off to university? What are you thinking? And I had other people say to me that that's irresponsible. Have you ever had yourself, have you thought about something and then you shared it with some people and then they just totally knocked you off and wrote you off as crazy or irresponsible because you had a bigger vision for yourself? Anybody here had that? Yeah. Yeah, and so what happened was I listened to them. Yeah, can you relate? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I listened to them, but I went home and I, again, I prayed. I thought of what I could do and I asked for a sign because that's how I live. I, I live by receiving guidance. Even in coming here, I thought, what would be the best uh, message that I can share? to uplift and inspire you and so this is what I received. So I asked for guidance and what came to me was there was a quote from Patrick Overton that says, when you come to the end of all the light you know and you're about to step off into the darkness of the unknown, faith is knowing that one of two things will happen. There, is, there will be something solid to stand on or you will be taught how to fly. <laughs> and I got that. I got that. And I, I could see that you all felt that. When I got it, I said, okay, God, life, universe, 
I get the message, thank you. And I went back to work and I told my supervisor that I had made a decision that I was going to leave. Now, of course, I had several things to put in place and I did put those things in place before I made that decision, but the decision was made. I was going to go to university. Long story short, I had to struggle some more. I had to get student loans. It wasn't all perfect. <coughs> It took me five years. In the process of time, I had another baby. The first child got sick. There was a lot. I pulled some all-nighters to get my projects done, but I did it. It took me five years, like I said. And at the end of it, I graduated with honors from my program. And it was powerful. I went back to visit with my colleagues that I left, and what do you think happened? I want you to share with me. What do you think might have happened? Anybody want to guess what pleased. could have happened? They were pleased. They were pleased.